A while back, work queues were introduced to Power Automate. Work queues are a mechanism to create decoupled flows, prioritize specific loads, and scale processing. Historically, we've been able to support decoupling by creating our own queue tables in Dataverse. But with this feature, it has become a standard framework and pattern. In this demonstration, I will show how we deliver a sales order payload to a work queue and use Power Automate flow to retrieve the next item on the work queue and process the content. My name is Henrik Marx Larsen, and I've been working with Dynamics 365, Finance and Operations, and its predecessors since 1997. For many years, I worked internationally as an IT professional implementing line of business applications, but today I work as a technology specialist at Microsoft. To get started, we must set up a work queue to hold queue items and manage processing status. Next, we need to enqueue data on the queue for processing. And lastly, we retrieve the next work queue item for processing. Let's see how it looks. Work queues are set up in Power Automate. In this example, I created a new work queue to hold sales orders we received from an external system. When I click on the work queue, I can open a detailed view. As you can see, the work queue currently has one item on the queue, which has already been processed. The input column on the queue item contains the content we would like to process. In this case, the queue item contains a JSON payload containing order header and line details. When I click on the Advanced Details button, I can see and copy the work queue ID, which I will need later when I enqueue and dequeue items. Now that we have an active work queue set up, it is time to put data on the queue. In this example, I've created a manually triggered flow that puts a sales order on the queue. In the real world, I would have received this information from an external system with an event or automated trigger. The next action is a Dataverse add a new row action. As the first input, it takes the work queue items table. Second input is the name of the queue item. I simply use a GUID to make the name unique. For the third input, we need to point to the work queue ID we copied earlier from advanced details. We then need to put sales order content into the input variable. I use JSON notation, but you can use any format. Lastly, we give the status reason as queued. When I go back and look at the work queue details, there's now a queued item on the queue. It is now time to start taking items off the queue. For this, we use the Dataverse perform a bound action action. The table we use is named work queues and the action is named DQ. In the row ID, we must enter the work queue ID we used when we put items on the queue. The information we receive is contained in the body from the Dataverse action. So we use it as input for a past JSON action. You can generate the schema using the output from a previous run. For the next past JSON action, I use the input variable from the first JSON we received. This contains the sales order information in JSON format. The next two actions are simply creating a sales order header and a sales order line in Dynamics 365 using data we retrieved from the queue item. In the last step, I use the update a row action on Dataverse to set the status of the queue item to processed. In the table name field, I select work queue items. 
The row ID is the work queue item ID from the first JSON we retrieved. Lastly, I set the status and status reason fields to processed. When I run the flow, a sales order is created in Dynamics 365 and the queue item is updated to process status as shown here. You can use this link if you're interested in learning more about work queues in Power Platform.